think failure is being lauded recently and I think failure sucks. And I think we should talk about that because I think failure just sucks and it's great to get something out of it, but you can't get around the fact that it sucks. <laughs> Nobody likes to fail. I don't like to fail and nobody likes to fail. However, I think the thing that's been nice that's come out of that is to me, failure is just a natural state. Like if you're actually gonna try and do something that's new for you, let alone new to the world, you're going to have failure. So I think the problem uh, with the way we've interpreted failure in the past is that we're pretending it doesn't exist. I think the thing is to accept that it just exists, it's just a thing, but that doesn't make it not suck, it still sucks. Emotional distance from failure is what makes failure tolerable. That's why like, you have the worst failure makes the best story, why is that? It's because once you have the distance, you can kind of enjoy that. You almost like, like I have stories, I've been hit by a car, that's like one of my go-to stories, right? I showed up for a test in college where I didn't even know the test was going on. Like I was so, it actually made me realize I was in the wrong major. I showed up at class like having no idea that the midterm was that day. But that's like, that felt terrible. <laughs> like that was not good. But it's one of my best stories. Like I laugh about that all the time. So I think having emotional distance is what makes failure tolerable. And then when failure is tolerable, you can either enjoy it or learn from it. But it still sucked at the moment. You know, I think that's the important thing. I don't know, it's necessarily time that you need to be able to benefit from failure, to be able to see the good in the failure. I think it has to do with like emotional distance, which time can give emotional distance, right? If I just, a year after, I can look back at something and it, it takes on a sheen of humor rather than like tragedy. But another way to do it is like somebody else's failure is much easier to learn from than your own. So actually like being around people who are taking risks is a good thing. Um, also just being able to cope with the emotions that come up during failure then allow you to access the good part of it, which is the learning. And I think that can come from like, you know, being centered in yourself. It can come from having so much failure at once that it reaches a, le a level of absurdity and you just kind of like see how crazy it is. The only reason failure is so terrible is because it's the thing, it's a manifestation of a thing that we are not trying to get. Like we're trying to get something else then this other thing is manifesting. And you know, sometimes it's tragic, like really tragic. I'm not trying to belittle failure at all. Like it can be life threatening, literally. But at the same time, there's always something in it that can help you grow or you can learn from, or you can even appreciate, which sounds weird. But the only way to do that is to figure out how to get emotional distance. Even in the worst failure, save from like a death or a real life threatening situation. I mean, I think there's something about it that gives you guidance as to what you should be doing. If you can hear it, that's the problem. <laughs> it's like, you don't want to hear it. I mean, I think the healthy thing about the way we're interpreting failure now is that like, oh yeah, failure is natural and it can teach you a good lesson, so be available to that. But it still sucks. It still sucks.